We're running the cover three here at Pro Football Weekly, where we bring you three under-the-radar stories from week 12 of the NFL season. And we're starting today with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who got back in the win column after two months by defeating the Titans 24-19 at Everbank Field Sunday. The biggest reason for the Jaguars starting to get things going again was quarterback Chad Henney, who in his first start with the Jaguars was terrific again, driving the ball downfield, throwing for over 260 yards and a pair of touchdowns. What we're starting to find out with Chad Henney at the controls is that maybe the Jaguars receiving group wasn't quite as bad as we thought with Blaine Gabbard under center, but what we've also found out is that the protection is still a major issue. Against the Titans, who are one of the worst pass rush defenses in the league, Henney was sacked seven times with leaks coming through all over the line. So while we know that Henny can get the ball downfield and the receivers can make plays, it remains to be seen if any of these guys up front, with the exception of left tackle Eugene Monroe, is good enough for this offense to take the next step with Henny or whoever else may be under center. The Saints and 49ers were tied 14 all going into halftime Sunday at the Superdome, but things went awry in a hurry for the Saints in the second half. 49ers came out and scored a touchdown of the first possession of the half, and on the next possession, Drew Brees threw his second pick six of the game. The Saints found themselves down 28 to 14 and playing from behind against one of the league's elite defenses. Brees had not been sacked in the first half against the 49ers, but he was sacked five times in the second half as the Saints tried to get back into that game, and that's a season high. Brees is now on pace to be sacked more times this season than in any other single season in his career. The Saints are not completely out of the playoff picture yet. They're still on the fringe of the wild card hunt, but they've got tough games coming up. You've got a quick turnaround going on the road to face the Falcons in week 13, and after that, you have the New York Giants on the schedule. These are defenses that have had their down moments this season, but if the Saints go into those games and fall behind like they did against San Francisco in the second half, you're going to be seeing pass rushers get after Drew Brees just like the 49ers group did Sunday in the Saints' loss. Dolphins rookie quarterback Ryan Tannehill learned just how quickly things can change in the NFL. Down by seven with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, he threw a very bad interception to Bobby Wagner. Unfortunately, Earl Thomas hit him and it was a penalty, so Ryan Tannehill was saved. Dolphins scored a touchdown, tying the game at 14. Later on in that quarter, Tannehill threw a beautiful 29-yard touchdown pass to Charles Clay to tie the game again at 21. And then down at the end of the game in the fourth quarter, Tannehill had a chance to march the Dolphins downfield and get, set them up for a victory. This has been a problem for Tannehill. Remember, he threw two fourth quarter interceptions against Buffalo in last week's loss, but this time he was on point. He was 3 for 3 for 51 yards on the final drive, and he had a 15-yard scramble, setting up Dan Carpenter's game-winning field goal, and the Dolphins are hanging on by a thread for their playoff hopes. Ryan Tannehill proved that he could be a fourth quarter quarterback and he also passed Dan Marino for most passing yards by a rookie for the Miami Dolphins. That's what they're hoping. They hope that Ryan Tannehill can be the next Dan Marino. Pretty lofty expectations, but the rookie really proved himself in the fourth quarter of the big win over Seattle. To see the rest of our analysis from Week 12, be sure to check out our website at ProFootballWeekly.com.